never had as much fun as I'm having playing with this chalkboard. Okay? It'll work on any surface, wood, glass, tin, or what have you. Right now, I have a wooden canvas, and I've applied a couple of coats of the paint, and we're gonna paint one of my favorite things, rosebuds and leaves and little dot flowers. You can find the design at plaidonline.com along with all sorts of wonderful things. Enough of this. Let's paint! I want to show you how to use this chalkboard paint. It's so easy. Simply put a little out on your palette or paper plate or whatever. Use a large flat brush and brush on a couple of coats, which of course I've already done here. Once it's dry, you have to condition it. Conditioning is very, very easy. All you have to do after the paint is dry is take a piece of chalk and just rub it all over the board like that. And then take a nice clean paper towel and rub it off. Why, you ask? Well, if I were to have written on this before I conditioned it and wiped it off, the next time I wrote something, what I had written the first time would show as a shadow. Now I've made a real chalkboard out of it, and that won't happen. You can find this darling little rosebud design at plaidonline.com, and you want to print it off, transfer it, or trace it onto a sheet of tracing paper, and then transfer it to your prepared and conditioned surface. Now, there's several ways to do that, but my favorite way is just to turn the traced pattern over and then just take a little piece of chalk and firmly go over the lines. Don't scribble all over the back because if you do, when you turn it over to transfer, it'll make quite a mess. Then just turn the pattern over, put it down. You can use a stylus, you can use a ballpoint pen, the handle of a paintbrush, whatever you have around, and just go over the lines. Now don't press down so hard that you make an indentation in the wood but I have already transferred this design, as you can see. You know, when you're working on a very dark background, it is a good idea to undercoat because paint can be very transparent. So I have undercoated the leaves in a light green and my rose in a light pink. In order to do that, I mixed a little white into my wonderful uh, citrus green and into my gorgeous magenta and made a light pink and a light green. And then I just lightly color book painted or undercoated that and let it dry. The little rosebud is actually like two U strokes. I'm going to take my chalk and just separate those two strokes like that. Now then, I'm going to take a little bit of the wonderful blending gel, just a little bit. This is an extender, and this will help to keep the paint wet. And I'll start on the upper portion of the rosebud first. Be careful. Don't get too much extender on. That will create trouble for you, and I don't want you to have trouble. Now, I've picked up a little of the magenta on the brush. Again, not too much paint, and just pat lightly. And just blend that into the gel. That's beautiful the way it is, and you can actually leave it that way if you want to without adding more paint. But I'm going to pick up a little more of the light pink on the brush now, just so that I get a little more coverage and apply that. And if you wish, you can pick up just a little white on the brush as well. Remember, I'm saying just a little. That is the key. I'm using that wonderful size 8 flat brush. I, I, the size seems to be a, a great size for me. And this is more of the blending gel, which is an extender, and it won't lift the uh, Folk Art Multi-Surface Paint, which is just marvelous. I'm going to pick up a little magenta on the side of the brush, and just carefully come to the bottom and just do like a 
pretty nice U. Carefully putting that on. Pick up a little of the light color on your brush. When I say a little, that's exactly what I mean. And then just kind of do another U stroke and just let it connect up on the edge of your brush right there. And then come back where the light pink meets the dark and patty pat 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 to blend one into the other. I like to pick up just a tiny bit of white too and just so carefully right up next to the dark center of my middle bud. Add that, wipe the brush, and again, I know, patty pat 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 pat. There is our beautiful little rosebud. Now it's time to show you how to paint a leaf and maybe a curly cue as well. And of course, I have another board prepared right here. I'm going to pick up just a little bit of the blending gel and it's so important not to use too much. You'll really have a mess on your hands. I can promise you that. Just barely cover it with a thin, thin amount of the blending gel. Pick up that wonderful dark color called Thicket and again, a small amount. If you get too much of the Thicket on, you'll be in trouble, but I want to pretty much cover the leaf with the thicket. The blending gel is going to keep the thicket wet and it's not going to lift the undercoat. Now I'm picking up the wonderful citrus green and I'm going to come carefully out to the edge and then touch, pull and lift. See how I pick that up? I don't drag all the way down to the bottom. Touch, pull and lift. It highlights and because I lift so quickly it shades into that wet thicket. Sometimes I'll pick up just the tiniest amount of white and maybe just here and there put an accent of white on so that there's variation between the leaves. I think a vein is very pretty to put into the leaf so you can do it with the liner brush I'm going to use the chisel edge of my flat brush and just do a little line creating a beautiful vein. The next thing I want to do are the curly cues. This is a 10 aught, a 10 zero liner brush, very, very tiny. And I'm using water to thin my light green mixture so that it's very thin and filling the little brush good and full of thin paint. Now I'm going to move over here and holding the handle so that it points straight towards the ceiling, I'm going to touch and I'm going to very slowly start moving, giving the paint time to flow from the hairs of the brush and creating that beautiful, dainty little curly cue. I'm going to do these little filler flowers. I call them dot flowers and as you can see I'm using a stylus but sometimes I use the handle of a paintbrush and uh, there's just all kinds of things including the point of the liner brush but look how I've made a head and two arms and two legs like that and if you think of it that way you'll come out with a, a really cool little five petal flower. Now look here I want to put two together so I'm going to take this one right here use it as the head and then I'm going to come over here and do two arms and two legs and it kind of connects them and it's very pretty to add other little dots just adding some fill-in strokes uh, to put this together. And while I have the white on the brush, I want to come right in here to the center of my rose with just a few little tiny dots because it looks pretty empty there if I don't go ahead and do that. Every little filler flower needs a center. So I'm going to pick up the wonderful daffodil yellow and just come in to the very center of it with a little tiny dot of the yellow, like so. And you can add as many filler flowers 
as you wish. This definitely needs a darling little border to finish it out. And I have that done, well almost. To show you the very finishing touches, I have a nice larger liner that holds a little more paint. And of course you want to transfer the design and then do the little dashes and the dots. A very, very easy and quick border. And look here, I'm just going to use the handle of the paintbrush to do the little dots, and it's the perfect size for that. So finish it up. It's just as sweet as it can be. You can write with chalk anything you want to on your chalkboard. The chalkboard paint is just delightful. You're going to love it. And you know what? You're going to love painting these very easy rosebuds that I've taught you to paint too. They're so sweet and so dear. Don't forget to check out plaidonline.com. So many wonderful project ideas can be found there. Oh, and remember, with brush in hand, my mind empties of its sorrows. And the beauty in life smiles. Keep on painting.